Okay, so um, to create a really good rendering of this, right? Um, I'm going to do a handful of things to start first getting um, some really interesting views put together. Um, and full disclosure, I really, I don't have my material on that guardrail yet. And as mentioned, I don't have the underside of this modeled yet. And it looks like I don't have a material for my roof yet. So I should be doing all of those things, but I'm not. Okay, um, because what we want to focus on today is setting up um, the camera for really good views. Okay, so um, working the way down the list, um, I, there are some things that I can do um, immediately globally with my lighting. Okay, so before I even set up a camera view, if I need to establish my specific location, I can do that. Um, the default location is where the software development team is located in Paris, right there. So I can move that like someplace northern United States. It's really not going to make a big difference, right? Because we're in a similar distance away from the equator. It's just going to be a little bit of a difference. I can also come in. My north arrow is right here. I can always change true north as well. But again, the key thing with that is almost always, again, nine times out of 10, I want shadows falling away from the camera. If I have shadows coming towards the camera, let's just look at that really quick. So this is shadows coming toward the camera. What starts to happen is I lose the definition on these wall surfaces. So that and that are the same tone. They're the same tone because they are both in shadow. When I have this set so that shadows are moving away from, I can start to see this and this as two different surfaces, and I get a good edge between those two. I'm always looking for those kind of things. I need things that create depth because I'm taking a 3D thing and flattening it into 2D. So I need those different things that show depth. Next, let's keep going um, into settings. I can certainly change my lighting here in this location. Um, that's not the lighting that I wanted the lighting under location in terms of time of day, right? So I can move this around and go day to night. We haven't looked at putting artificial lighting in yet, but we will get there. Um, but you will notice, uh, let's get one that's sort of, uh, well, this isn't nearly as dramatic as the other project that we had, but it, you'll notice this kind of acts like a single floodlight moving back and forth over everything, right? The, the lighting changes aren't really dramatic and they certainly aren't sort of soft in terms of how they're working. Um, and that's because this is really handling the lighting of the scene as if it's from a single source, a light bulb or a floodlight happening above the house. And how actual light happens on the exterior in particular is it is taking lighting from the entire sky. Right. Yes, we have the sun. It's our primary source. But the rest of the sky is actually creating all of the ambient light for the exterior. Right. And what that does is it sort of decreases the harshness of shadows, things like that. So I might want to not might want to. I do want to go ahead and bring some of those things in on my individual renderings. All right. So as we move down from my list, um, I have this uh, setup for, for my media. Um, and for this particular project, we're only using the image button here. So I'm going to go image and I'm going to click the plus sign to build my first image to start working with. Yeah. There's um, I don't have any shadow. Um, it might be your computer. So if you're not seeing shadows and things like that, you can go to edit and preferences and quality. And you are going to see this list of stuff. And that is twin motion by default. It is going to default to what it thinks your computer is going to run the best. Right now, it's not going to when you do a final rendering, you are going to get final rendering quality, not necessarily just what you see on screen. Okay. So if you're not, and the other thing that you'll see, like if I take all this down to low, 
and say, okay, dramatic change. But it's not going to render like that. It is going to give me final rendering quality. But I know that it's going to take a while to upgrade that when it goes from this view to my final rendering quality. Okay, so let's go back to edit, preferences, qualities, ultra, and okie dokie. Um, okay, so from here, what I need to do is I'm going to go on my image right here. I'm going to click more. Actually, first thing I should do, three dots, rename, view from trees. Name your views, y'all. Name them. You'll be much happier later. It's also going to export. When I do my exporting, it is going to export based off of this name. So when I export this out, it is going to be named View from Trees. Okay. So if I want something like this as a view, um, I want to come in. Like, what are some of the lighting changes that we could do to do the things that Dave likes, which is drama. Dave likes drama. Yeah. I know you're only stretching, but I don't care. You raised your hand anyway. You asked for lighting, right? Yeah, lighting. What can we do to amplify the lighting? More drama. Golden hour. Golden hour. Sorry, over, totally overwrote you. Sunset. Yeah, let's do it. And not that every rendering should have a sunset, right? But it's definitely something we should at least be looking at, right? More dramas. Okay, so to do something like that, again, I can come in and go more, and that's going to be underneath location, which is weird to me, but that's where it's at. And I can try and set this so it's like more like, uh, yeah, kind of, right? With the time of day. But um, a better way to do that is going to be, I'm going to come back to... Um, my lighting, and there is a button right here called Sky Dome. So what Sky Dome is going to do is it's going to change your rendering from a single light source to an image that we download. And so it's going to change my lighting to an image that we download from a complete sky. So it's going to give me all of the ambient lighting and the quality of time of day and apply it to this image. So I'm going to go ahead and turn SkyDome on, and it's going to take a minute to recalculate how light is interacting with the scene. Okay, not really a dramatic change there, definitely a change. Um, and if I were to cruise around a little bit, um, let's do right here where you can see this shadow. If I turn it off, you're going to see that is a really harsh shadow, right? Pretty strong edge to the shadow. Um, and it's it's going to even change location a little bit because the lighting is coming from that. This is a much less harsh shadow, okay? Because it is calculating that as my sunlight right there. That even though that's only an image, it's calculating the image from that location. If I go to more on my sky dome, I can even move that around, and it's going to change the lighting based off of where that sun is interacting with my scene, right? So that isn't necessarily what I'm looking for uh, in terms of golden hour though, that is noon-ish, right? So I can switch this to on my sky dome tab and you'll find this underneath your library, library, sky dome. I've got these three options, morning and afternoon, noon and low sun. So if I go to low sun and cloudy, I have all of these to pick from. And if you'll notice, all of these have the download button on them. That is because each one of these is somewhere in the 30 to 50 megabyte range. And so these are all stored on Twinmotion servers, not on your hard drive. This would destroy your computer. So take Twinmotion from I don't know, what is it, 20 gigs to like, I don't know, 800. Um, so let's just grab one of these that has drama. Drama, drama, drama. Yeah, low sun and cloudy. So to add this in, I'm going to click the download button. 
Then let's go back to this image. Again, as I'm building images, you guys should remember this. Anytime I select this image, it's gonna snap me back to that view. Um, if I wanna change that view just a little bit, like maybe I wanna see just a little bit more of the side of the house, Uh, you should. It should be right there. It is right there, but like it's not. Uh, I can't click it. It's like. Is it grayed out? Yeah. If it's grayed out, it probably means you're not connected to the internet right now. Probably. Hopefully. And... You know, like this tree. Okay, this is the fun thing about working in a virtual world. That tree is so in my way right now. So I'm gonna get rid of it because I can. 10 and gone. You don't you can't do that in the real world. Well, I mean you could take a chainsaw to it, but that would be wrong. Right? Okay. So let's go back to, I'm hoping that that Sky Dome is finished downloading now. We were low sun, cloudy. Does anybody else have not have that download button? Telling you to sign in? Yeah, if you haven't signed in, like, so if you, if you didn't launch twin motion from the epic games launcher that might be another reason why you don't have it okay so that's finished downloading to apply this sky dome all i have to do is drag and drop it to my scene and it's going to take a minute to apply that to my background or the dome that's actually around my object and it's going to take another short minute to calculate the rendering and the lighting quality But blamo, done. Um, once I have that in place, lighting, um, I can continue to move that around so I can get the lighting from the location that I need it and also get sort of the part, the portion of the background that I really want. Something like that. It's kind of cool. Okay, next thing that I might want to do, if you think about having a camera in your hand, um, one of the things that we often do is have um, depth of field. And there are two important steps to depth of field in a rendering, okay? So I'm going to go back to lighting and back to view from trees. And I am going to look at weather. Okay, so the first thing that I can do is increase the density of smog. And again, I mentioned this in section one. I'm going to mention it to you guys. I wish it was named fog and not smog. Smog implies pollution. Um, but if I increase the smog, you can see these trees in the background look much further away. What this is doing, this is amplifying the atmospheric particles in your scene and saying, okay, things further away have less saturation in terms of their color, which is the way the world really works, right? There's more stuff in the air between me and that. And as such, things are going to have less color further away, right? It's decreasing the saturation of those things in the background. And what that really does, that really helps this tree read foreground, those trees read background. And the difference is, especially when I render that out as a flat image, is really dramatic, right? So I re I'm almost always going in and adjusting that per image to help explain depth. Okay, the next thing that I will do, although this was a, a dramatic failure in section one, we'll see if it works here. So if I go back to image, more I can go to camera 
and turn on depth of field. So when I turn on depth of field, what that does is it allows me to select what I'm focusing my camera in on. If I go to more, I have a distance slider. I'm going to guess that that's like maybe 40, 50 feet away. I can do that. And now I've got my foreground elements out of focus. What I want to focus on, this corner in focus, and then what's further away, further out of focus again. Right, so it's a really good technique that photographers have been using since the advent of an advanced lens. Okay, so with those things set, it's also really important to note that I am setting things up only for this image. And I know that because right here, this button, quit media mode exists. This is the same kind of thing as we are editing a family in Revit, right? I'm not editing globally. I'm only editing this image right here. As soon as I click quit media mode, I go back to the default sky. I go back to the default lighting package, all of that stuff. And I typically like that. That is how I like to work inside of twin motion because I don't want every single image. I don't want to have to start with golden hour for everything, right? I would much rather be able to build different sky domes for different views, different renderings so that I can experiment with what I'm seeing. Okay. As soon as I click back on this image, reloads the sky dome, modifies my lighting. This button comes back up. I am now back into editing media mode again, right? If I want a brand new image, I've got two options. If I want to start from scratch again, I'm going to go quit media mode, create image, and now I've got a brand new image. Let's move this to a new location. Like let's come up here, looking at the bridge. And I am going to, so I've moved this to a new location and I'm going to click refresh that view to lock that view in. And now I'm ready to start adding to this view, the sky dome, all of that stuff again. Or if I click this, I can also move to a new location. Let's do something like this. And I can click plus. And now I've got that same thing loaded from that initial image. Okay, so there's multiple ways that I can go about doing that. Cool, you guys good with that? Super important to understand that when I'm working on an image, I am working specifically on that image. I'm not modifying everything globally. That's the key thing to learn from me. Okay, so let's look at exporting these. So the first thing that I need to understand is the resolution at which I'm rendering. Um, and I want you, to, you all, to, for the most part in architecture school, we are setting these up for a board, a presentation. Uh, in this class, we're just sending them online, right? Um, but often I'm setting these up for a board. If I look at each image, I have some basic resolution settings that I can do. So again, I'm going to click on more and then I'm going to go to this very last one right here, which is format. Under my format, the default is 2K, 1920 by 1080, which is less than the resolution of my monitor. So I'm going to say for the most part, almost every architectural rendering that you're doing, that is too low as a default. So I would encourage you set that to 4K um, UHD ultra high def, okay? So, and I need to do that for each image. So image, more format, 4K, image, more format, and 4K. Um, also, if I need to like something billboard sized, because on occasion we do those, um, you'll notice that when I select that there is custom. 
down here. So I can set the resolution of these to be ridiculous. Just realize the rendering time goes up exponentially. So what we should see when I render these out should be a couple of seconds to do each rendering. It will certainly start taking minutes. And as the resolution goes up, it will certainly start taking hours to do each one. Okay, so be aware of that. Um, but for this project, and really for almost every rendering you're going to do for architecture school, um, 4K is going to be fine. 4K is going to give you really crisp, sharp resolution and approximately 11 inches by 17 inches in size and down. Okay, so I've got something on the board. If I need to get into that 24 by 36 inch size, I need to probably increase my resolution from there. Okay, so let's go down one more. So the very last column is my export. Um, we're working only with images, so I'm going to click empty, and I'm going to select all three of those. From there, super simple. Start export, select where I want them to go. So I'm going to go new folder, horizon, horizon, house, select folder, and done should take, like my computer, this should take, I don't know, 30 seconds, more or less. None of these, they shouldn't take very long for anybody, right? Um, because the, the, as the render engine goes inside of Twin, it is very fast. Now, there are some things that we'll get into when we get into... Um, some interior renderings where we need more light bounces, and those are going to take longer. So now I have each one of these, and in particular, that's the one that I was most interested in. That worked a lot better. I'm happy with that depth of field, with the foreground blurred through the background. Um, on the Cliff House section one, the foreground blurring um, looked like lightning bolts. Green lightning bolts. It was awful. Probably just needed to move the camera around, get the blades of grass a little bit further away from the camera and look at it from there. But that's kind of nice, right? Well-framed, looks like something I would do, try and do with my camera if I was on site. Cool, so that is what you're setting up for these final renderings. I am always looking at, for final renderings, um, how to bring in a better sky. And there's like, I don't know, I think there's the numbers like 250, 300 different sky domes. So for my exterior renders, I'm almost always bringing in a custom sky dome, not the default sky dome. Okay. Um, and I'm doing that per image. I don't necessarily want to do that on my default global. I'm doing that per image, a different sky dome. Um, I'm always setting up my depth with the smog slider to make sure foreground and background reads well. And often, but not always, I'm turning on depth of field as well. Because all of those things just give that image more quality, more depth. Cool. For this assignment, you don't necessarily need to add in a lot of entourage. I'm not necessarily looking for lots of people and things on this. Um, there were a few people in section one that had crashes. If you are noticing twin motion getting crashy, yeah, I'm nodding. Yeah, if it's if it's starting to get crashy on you, it the the I'm not meaning this to bash anybody's laptop, but it's because your video card isn't what twin motion needs, right? So I'm running an NVIDIA 3000 series card on this. If you are an NVIDIA 1000 card or less. Twin's going to start to get crashy on you. So my first point of advice for you is trees and grass. Don't do them. I'm not going to get all judgy judgy on you if you don't have trees and grass. If I'm questioning you on it, make sure you say, yeah, Twin was getting crashy. Eliminate those things. You always have Photoshop or Affinity Photo, which is where we're going next. Okay. So if you're experiencing more than one crash per hour, don't do trees and grass and see if that doesn't improve it, okay? Um, again, you're kind of missing out on some of the major features, but at the same time, uh, yeah, what you got is a laptop. 
right? And I'm not going to say, well, you flunked the class because your laptop's not quite capable of doing treatment class. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not cool at all, right? So do what you can. And then just understand, okay, I'm, I better pay really close attention to how Photoshop and Affinity Photo work in this next series because that's where I'm going to need to do trees and grass. Cool? Yeah, just be, I, I get it, right? And that's not that the surfaces, I mean, those are great lap stops. Yeah, and it might be, it might be that Skydome. Yeah, it, it, it might be that Skydomes do it too. Because again, what Skydome is trying to do, rather than a single point of light, it's doing like, a, you know, guessing 500 points of light coming in across it, right? And so it's just massively different in terms of what it's asking your computer to do. So yeah, also don't do that. And then again, you know, what it does is it places more importance on you for post-processing. My philosophy in teaching this stuff is I want to get as I want to get as good of a view as I possibly can here and do minimal post-processing. Right? But that's just not the way the world works. And I'll also say photorealism, guys, aim for photorealism if you want to. Everybody kind of wants to get there. I want it to look like a photograph. Everybody kind of wants to get there. Once you get close to it, you'll be, eh man. Okay, yeah, maybe it looks photorealistic, but. It doesn't really describe my project as well as pulling back a bit and again, exaggerating to communicate, not going for photorealism, but going for a really interesting and novel rendering, right? That's more important than trying to replicate life, right? So don't worry about it. It's, I am, I'm not judging you on how photorealistic you can get for sure. And then once you kind of get through that curve, oh, I got close to photoreal, and I'm going to go back and go stylized, then your next learning curve is I'm going to do stylized photo reel. And that's where you kind of want to exist in this stuff, is the ability for it to look real, not be in the uncanny valley, but also be highly stylized. Would you call this photo like highly stylized photo No, I would, I would say that this is about 60% of the way to photorealistic. And no stylized? Not stylized at all, no. Totally accepting of the defaults that are in there. Yeah, so let's look at, like, that's a really good one. I'm still screencasting this, so this will be kind of fun. Um, but let's do a twin motion challenge eight. Room with a view. So the twin motion always does these community challenges, and they give away some really cool prizes sometimes. Yeah, 500 bucks. So this is the room with the view challenge. So these are all things directly out of twin. So that one's kind of cool. I didn't even see that one, but check that out. And this is, they do not allow post-processing in this. No, no Photoshop, no Photoshop. They, 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 you have to send them the scene. If you're going to win, you have to send them the twin motion scene as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. So is that one? Um, Oh, where's, oh, where, say where the winners are? If I stay like this, double out. Like, double hundred. Well, I mean, if I just, if I just get like boss money, double hundred. Yeah, I'm not giving that. But it'd be cool even have like a shadow. Yeah, but those guys have like actual teams. I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> You're also on tiny <laughs> Okay, here we go. Here the, the so challenge eight, here's here are the winners. Right? Um so again, zero post processing. Um so the challenge was room with a view. I think there was a little bit more to the statement of that, but it was an interior to exterior rendering is what they were looking for. High definition child. Yeah, hair's a little uncanny valley for sure. It's a little bit lumpy. Like if you could just like kind of do that and recrop it, it's pretty darn cool. But yeah, kind of kind of like a fun take on it, right? The, what's ridiculous on this is the roof. You can see the tile. I'm super picky, y'all. I can see the tiling, and that bugs me just a little bit. But that's so picky. I mean, if I had done that rendering, I'd be super happy. So, 
Well, I'm being picky. That's just kind of wrong. Actually, I, I think that one's better, actually. That's kind of nice. Really? <laughs> wow. That's a lot of red, and they pulled yeah. it off. I would not be brave enough to do red. I would totally not be brave. I, I am not good enough with color palettes. That's, yeah. I like, like, so cool. So you guys, it, I mean, this, this is, this software is capable of whatever. So why I, I went to this to say, these are stylized, right? These are both photoreal and, and stylized. You know, this, this is sort of what, um, the unreal community, um, is looking for in terms of that. Cause like this, this is clearly photo real, but it's also clearly not real. Yeah. And that's where the software, that's sort of the next level thinking on the software like this. And that's where you get into style of things. It's like, whatever, like the Verizon app would like, not real be like Aurora Borealis or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so like, let's go back into Twin really quickly, where you can start to go with this as well. If I go into here, image, and let's look at more on this one. Um, there are some really basic things I can do with filtering, okay? Um, and I should have gone there with this. Uh, visual effects. So there are a set of filters here. Some of them are really good. Some of them are really good. 8-bit, kind of creepy. Um, ballpoint pen, eh. Blueprint, meh. Halftone, totally don't get that one, but you could. Um, there are some really nice hidden line kind of things, right? Those are kind of nice. For sure. Um, there are also, uh, let's do things that are getting close to SketchUp. Um, let's see here, where would it be? Line regular, oh, that's no good. That's not good either. What'd you say, sci-fi sci is trippy. Let's see, was it sci-fi? Yeah. So, I mean, it actually works better depending on where you're at. Right? So that's kind of cool. Um, but there's a whole list of things to do. But the one I usually, I, I don't think I've ever used any of these professionally speaking. Um, so let me set this back to none. But the one that I do use professionally is also sort of right in here. And that is, um, let's see. Yeah, okay, always remember what you're showing because uh, there's my chi, right? That's the scene between that object that I brought in and the site. But if I am not ready, so let's say this is for a midterm review and I am nowhere close to being ready to talk materials. This rendering that I might show wouldn't be using one of the filters except for clay render. Okay, when I activate clay render, it is going to overwrite all of the materials. So this is like a foam core or a museum board model, um, except it defaults to this weird lime green. I've never quite understood that, or lime blue. I guess, I don't know, but it just never really works. I usually take it to a warm gray and get that kind of image. Right, and so what that does, if I'm meeting with a client, this, it takes all of the attention away from materiality and puts it all on form. And there's a certain part of the conversation, like especially as you approach Community Studio, if you're going to be showing them renderings, I would be showing this kind of rendering, something that looks more like a physical model than something that's aiming for photorealism. Because what that's going to do is it's going to steer the conversation towards an early conversation. Form context, space. Clients will talk all day long with you about materials because materials are easy to grasp. They're easy to wrap your head around. You will not be able to steer them often away from talking materials if you put something that has brick on it in front of them because it's harder to have a conversation about, you know, because the concept is it's this house it's sitting on the edge of a cliff. It's going to jut out. Is that cool? Is that working for you? What's it doing? Does it work within the context, especially Horizon? There's a whole series of these things. 
that's the kind of rendering that you want to show for those conversations. So I'm always thinking about this image creates this conversation. What kind of information do I need coming back from my client? Cool? So this one I use. The other filters I, I just haven't gotten into that much just because I haven't. Cool? That's it for the day, you guys. We've got five more minutes for Q&A. Happy to do it. Um, and we will go from there.